How's it going guys? Hayden here from Alarm System Store again and today we're going to be doing an installation video on the VDB770 Wi-Fi video doorbell camera. This is the only Alarm.com camera that features the video analytics that they offer, so it is a huge improvement over regular doorbell cameras. Um, it also has two-way audio. Uh, that's pretty common on doorbell cameras, but I thought I would mention it as well. And it has a bit of a long installation, so I'm just going to be going over the parts list instead of actually unboxing it. But as you can see there on the left, you'll have the doorbell itself. Um, you got a couple hardware packs. Uh, that white box there with the wires coming out is a power adapter, and I'll show you what we'll be doing that with that in a minute. And then uh, the other three pieces on the right side there are angled brackets, so you can change the angle of the camera on the wall if need be. Um, so that pretty much covers it. Uh, there's four screws in that hardware pack. There's a couple of B connectors for your wires. Um, and then the other pieces in there um, are sticky tape. And then there's a, a key to release the doorbell from its housing once it's in place. Um, so that covers that. So we'll jump into the installation real quick. So basically the first part of getting your VDB770 installed is installing uh, the power adapter that I mentioned earlier. So this is actually going to go um, on your chime. So wherever your doorbell chime is located, uh, you'll need to find it. And then you need to make sure that the transformer uh, for your chime is at least 16 volts. Um, needs to be 16 to 30 volts AC. Um, Basically, you're going to disconnect the two wires like you saw me do there, and then you're going to connect the white wires from that power adapter uh, to the transformer itself. And then you're going to splice the gray wires onto the two wires that you removed from the transformer. Uh, this is what allows the VDB770 to actually uh, trigger your doorbell chime whenever the button is pressed or it notices a person at your door. So once you get your wires spliced, um, however you're comfortable doing it, whether it's B connectors or uh, wire nuts, whatever you want to use, uh, basically you're going to tuck those wires in and the little white box that's on the power adapter, um, you'll put the double-sided sticky tape on the back of it and then you can attach it to the side of the chime there like I'm doing. Uh, this basically just keeps it up and out of the way and then once that is done, you can replace the cover for your doorbell chime. So the next step, uh, we have to go to the actual doorbell button itself. Um, so after I get this on here, we'll go outside. And I do apologize, there was some glare from the sun while we were doing this. So I adjusted the camera as best I could, uh, but we did lose a little bit of the end footage. But anyway, uh, all I'm doing here is removing the old doorbell button. So once you get it, Unscrewed, just take the wires out. Um, and again, this is live, so if for whatever reason you cannot figure out how to depower uh, your doorbell transformer, um, these wires will be live, so make sure that they do not get shorted. Uh, doorbell chimes are extremely easy to short, so uh, basically just make sure your wires are separated. And we're going to be installing the back plate uh, for the doorbell. Uh, those angled brackets that I mentioned earlier, the black ones, those are going to go on first and that's what sets the angle for your doorbell camera. Um, so we made a little template there and we're drilling our holes. Uh, basically you just need one on top and one on bottom. Uh, right here I actually have one of our uh, newer recruits um, so kind of running him through how to do this stuff. Uh, he's a little uh, behind the curve on power tools and installation type stuff. So I was letting them do that. So you'll see two sets of hands here, but basically um, I'm just running them through the process. Um, there's two long screws that come in the hardware pack for the VDB770. So you're gonna use those two to secure the angled bracket uh, to the door frame. And then if you can see those two uh, threaded holes that are right and uh, there's one right below uh, the top screw that we just put in and one right above the bottom screw we're putting in now. Uh, those are where the back plate for 
the VDB770 attach. So the VDB770 actually has a backplate with two wires on it, as you'll see there. Um, so you need to splice those wires onto your two doorbell wires. Now, it's not polarity sensitive, so you can connect either one um, to either wire. But basically, um, I'm running him through uh, how to connect these up and put B connectors on. You can use other methods to splice, but I will tell you there's not much room in those angled brackets. So uh, B connectors is what worked best for us. If you have something smaller that might fit a little bit better in that small space there, you can use that. Um, but basically, you're going to crimp your wires together. And here in just a moment is where we actually lost footage. So I don't ha have anything for us mounting that back plate. But basically in that hardware pack, there are two shorter screws and those two shorter screws are going to secure the back plate to the angled bracket. Um, if you can see under that thumb there, there's little rubber flaps. Uh, that's where the holes for those screws are. Uh, so you lift those flaps and you use the two small screws to secure um, the back plate to the angled bracket. From there, uh, once it's mounted, you'll just take the actual uh, doorbell camera itself and it just snaps on to that white back plate. Um, so make sure you have it oriented correctly. You don't want your doorbell upside down. But anyway, I do apologize. That's the footage we missed, um, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to be running through connecting it to Wi-Fi in this video. Um, We've done that in other videos, and I'm probably going to do a short on it that I will link in the description so that you guys can check it out if you're unsure. But basically, once um, Alarm.com cameras are connected to your Wi-Fi network, you can use your phone app to uh, enroll the device onto your Alarm.com account. So that's what I'm going to be doing here in a moment. And as you can see here, uh, we just jumped over to uh, my phone recording. Uh, so I couldn't use a computer, so it isn't going to be full screen. I do apologize, but uh, basically you're just going to see me adding devices, adding this device and setting it all up. So uh, basically once you get logged into alarm.com, you'll click add device and then there is a doorbell camera option on that page. So you're going to click doorbell camera and then it's going to bring up an installation wizard for the doorbell camera. Now, as you'll see there, I did bring up that 770 force immediately. That will happen as long as your phone and the camera are on the same Wi-Fi network. So once you get to this screen, all you're going to do is click install. And after you click install, it's going to ask you to name the doorbell. I just named it doorbell because that's easy. And then you're going to have to sit through about three to five minutes of the installation. Uh, basically, it does updates, you know, make sure everything's working properly. But once it is finished, you will get to this page and then all you're going to do is click next. And that is going to take you to the actual camera setup page. The first thing it's going to have you do is actually make sure that uh, your camera is situated the way that you want. So after it loads, it's going to show you uh, what the camera can see. So at this point, you can use uh, the other angled brackets to actually change which direction the doorbell is facing. So if you need more coverage left or right, um, you can use one of those. And then once you're done, basically you just click next and it's going to ask you which mount you use. Now each of these has a letter designation from A through H, I believe. Uh, so just pick the one that you used and then it's going to ask you what kind of chime type you have. Uh, so ours is a mechanical type, so you click that, and then it's going to run you through setting up push notifications. Um, you can enable or disable them if you wish. Basically, it just means it's going to send a notification to your phone if that camera is triggered for any reason. So once you've decided, just click next, and then it's going to ask you a couple of questions about triggers. So the first one's doorbell call, record a clip when someone presses the doorbell button, on or off. And then the second one is person detection. Uh, that le allows it to basically take a recording every time it sees a human on that doorbell uh, camera view. Uh, so you can set those as appropriate. And then there 
it's going to talk about recording rules next. So uh, these are video analytics rules. So with the 770, you have to use video analytics or else it does not work properly. But basically what that allows you to do is set up a zone where it actually will pick up, you know, who is, uh, it will pick up where uh, it's gonna start looking for people at. So uh, using your fingers, it's a little bit awkward as you can see. Uh, I was going for a, a, a square, but it didn't quite work out. Um, but basically manage it the best you can. Uh, set up a zone where you want the camera to watch for human figures. Uh, so basically I did it where it's hitting the driveway on the left there and covers the walkway up to the porch and then right in front of the camera um, and then next it's going to ask you how sensitive you want it so higher sensitivity it's going to try picking up people from further away lower it's going to wait till they get closer and there's a slew of different options you can set up for this um, so you can set when it's going to be recording where um, it's located using geofencing uh, so if Let's say you're inside that geofence, it's not gonna uh, record. Um, you can also set notification preferences so you decide who it goes to. Uh, and then what I'm setting there is uh, for automation. So if your alarm.com count doesn't have automation, you won't see that section, but basically you can use it to trigger like a porch light that's a smart device or something like that. Um, and you can set when that automation is going to run. And then the very last option for this thing is enable touchless doorbell. Now what this allows you to do is set another ground zone, same as we did a minute ago. And with this one, what it's going to do is whenever somebody triggers that ground zone, it's actually going to sound the chime and alert you via notification that somebody is at your door. Um, rather than just recording a clip because it saw motion or waiting for somebody to touch the doorbell button, um, setting this ground zone allows people to uh, basically trigger the doorbell and the chime without uh, having to touch anything. So this could be handy for deliveries or um, I know there's some people out there that still uh, prefer the touchless delivery of items and things like that. Um, so this can kind of help give you notifications when somebody approaches your door. And then you just tell it how long somebody needs to be within that ground zone before it triggers the chime. So, and then once you click done, it's gonna ask you one last time uh, whether you want the doorbell call or uh, the person to trigger the recording notification, and then you're done. So now you should have a doorbell camera uh, card on your home screen of your alarm.com app. But uh, that's going to do it for me. Uh, that was uh, kind of a lengthy install compared to most alarm.com cameras. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you could, please like and subscribe. Uh, it helps us keep these videos coming. But like I said, that's going to be it for me. And I will catch you guys on the next one.